So, everybody out there, and welcome to another episode of Guide Live uh, from the uh, Guideline uh, showroom in Jönsred, Sweden. Uh, my name is Henrik Larsson, and today we're going to talk about uh, weight forward fly lines together with uh, Chris Rones and Jim Curry, who's sitting uh, at home in uh, the UK and in Switzerland. So we will call them up uh, in a little while. First, we're going to have a look at some new items that just arrived uh, into our warehouse here. And today, we got those images from uh, our power team member up in northern Sweden, Emil Westrin. So those images are really just a couple of hours old. Uh, and you see here, there's uh, some new fly boxes uh, that Emil, together with, with our uh, colleague Rune, has made. Uh, and uh, I will show them to you here. So this is our new, our um, ultralight boxes, which are now, uh, now available in a XL size, which is made for uh, big streamers, for big dry flies, or uh, yeah, big predator flies, where you need some extra room, uh, like this in the boxes. So they are very high and five centimeters thick, so you can get some really big flies in there. And they are made with uh, slit foam, very dense slit foam, so you never puncture the, the foam where you put the flies in. Uh, and they have a magnetic closure uh, with a screw, so you never lose those uh, connections. Uh, so they are under 100 grams each, and we're going to have them in four colors. But uh, right now, we have this lime green version uh, available. Uh, that will be on our website next week. Uh, and we have this orange uh, color also. And we will have another two one, which is a predator green fish camo, and we will have coastal bluish fish camo also. But right now, we have those uh, two colors, lime green and orange available. Uh, and they are uh, 28 euros uh, in the shops, or 2.99 in uh, Swedish and Norwegian kronor. Brand new boxes. Uh, so today's subject is weight for fly lines. And um, well, we will uh, switch over to uh, Chris and Jim. Can you hear me, guys? Can hear you, Henke. Hi, Henke. Very, Very good. Welcome to the live show and uh, hope you're all fine. Yeah, all good, brother. Bye. Kicking here. Very good, very good. So basically, we will talk about uh, some of our new uh, weight forward fly lines, and you will tell us about your uh, insights and where you use them and how you use them. And we will also talk about uh, uh, leaders for those lines. So basically, I think I will switch to the big screen and uh, just welcome and uh, let's go. Hi everybody and welcome. My name is Christopher Rounds and I'm here with my good friend and colleague Jim Corey from the UK to talk about uh, the new range of guideline way forward lines and how to choose the perfect and appropriate line for your particular fishing situation. I think maybe the most asked question we both get is what line should I get for my rod and for my river? And Jim, Jim and I have been in this game for donkey's years and uh, we both know this feeling when you're out with a, <clears throat> with a client and you're guiding somewhere and they're struggling to get, the, to get the fly out or to present the fly to the fish. So you pass them over your rod and their eyes just light up because we've picked the right line for that particular situation. Um, so Jim, how can we help um, people fight their way through the forest of fly lines out there to pick the right weight forward fly line for their particular situation yeah it is a forest right mate i mean we we encounter this all the time and i get it i completely get it i mean you know when i was kind of 14 15 years old wandering into my local tackle shop i had like a two choices it was either this one yeah. or the river line wake forward five or i had this one one was about 12 quid and one was about 22 quid 
Um, and the choice was made purely on how much money I had in my pocket, which at that age, not very much. Now, if you go on our retailers' websites, if you go wander into some of our retailers' shops, you are faced, as you say, with an absolute forest of lines. And it is impossibly confusing at times. So we're going to kind of unpick that, aren't we, today? We're going to talk about the lines we've got that, crucially, we've been using, Chris, and we've been using different lines in our new range of trout lines, which is quite cool. So we could, we've got kind of first-hand experience of the ones that we've chosen today. It is a big range, but we've kind of picked the ones that we know work for the situations that we that we fish. We're going to talk about them in with reference to specific fishing conditions. And we're going to try and hopefully by the end of it, have made it a little simpler and understand why there are so many line choices and options available. So in short, if you're fishing on small and medium sized rivers, right, where you've not got a lot of line outside the rod tip, where you don't want to be throwing a lot of line into back cast because you might not have room, and where your intended target is close to you, you're not going to have a lot of line outside the rod tip. You still need to turn over at times a long leader. So we have a line for that in the range, which is my favorite line for the river that's 100 meters down that way. And in fact, that outfit is set up down there beneath me in the basement, um, ready to rock and roll. Um, if you fish on larger rivers where you are going to be presenting potentially flies at a greater distance, you're going to need control over range at range. So you're going to need a head length, which is longer. And if you somebody said to us, Chris, well, listen, that's all fine and dandy, but these are expensive lines, and they are all expensive lines, and a good line does cost money, but it's money well spent. Um, I just want kind of like an overall general fly line that kind of is a substitute for, for all the kind of fishing I've done. Then we have an option available to you. So that's how we're going to unpick it, right, mate? Um, on top of that, though, we're going to drop in a couple of things about just fishing and, and approaching your fishing. And, you know, I am the grand old age of 50 years old, God damn it, this year, Christopher. And I, which makes me feel super old, because I am blind and deaf, basically. The, um, I started in this industry when I was 17 years old, right? So I've spent most of that time as a guide, as a ghillie, as an instructor. I've seen a lot of people making the same mistakes on the river, and I know that as these lockdown restrictions start to get eased, everybody will be super keen, um, just as I am and you are, pal, to get out on the water again and start fishing. Um, but just to maximise your chances on the water, I just wanted to go through a couple of things. Your approach to the water, assuming that you, you reel your line and your rod are all balanced, how you approach your intended target when you get down on the water for the first time or every time you approach a, a bit of water, um, is absolutely crucially important. For me, Good you sense. have to establish a battle plan, Chris. You know, you have to have a little kind of conversation in your mind about if it's a rising fish, how are you going to approach it? Where are you going to approach it from? Which side? Can you approach it from downstream, from upside? How close can you get to your target? You know, how carefully can you wade through the water? You know what it's feeding on, of course. If you're fishing nymphs, it's the same conversation. It's the same kind of conversation you've got to have in your head. Um, one of the, my great mentors as I was growing up was a guy called Peter McKenzie Phelps, who was a, a dashing, very posh, um, very knowledgeable and fun guy to be around. And he said, my dear boy, he said, the most important for distance in fly fishing is the six inches between your bloody ears. And that's... Super true. And at times, Chris, when we've wrapped up ourselves in a myriad of different bits of fly fishing equipment, it's easy to forget that how we approach the water, the direction which we approach it, how close we can get to our intended target, um, immersing ourselves in that environment. We are, as soon as we step in that water, mate, we're not in our environment anymore. We're in the trout or the salmon environment, you know. And, and immersing yourself that easy for us because we spend a lot of time, I know, where the waders on. Um, but I just wanted to get that point across. Balance kit, the right yeah. amount of knowledge and the stuff you're going to talk about with leaders and casting will put you in that 10% that catches 9% of the fish. Cool. 
So you've been using the, the tactical, have you, Jim? I have. This baby here, yeah. I'm glad we've put exactly what it says on the tin now, on the fly lines, because, you know, I'm kind of from the north of England, so not blessed with a tremendous amount of grey matter. So as the name suggests, this tactical line, Chris, is good for up close and personal smaller to medium-sized river fishing, and that's due to the length of the head, right? So it's a 30-foot head, so it's not super short, but most of my fishing, mate, is done with the head back on the reel. There are very few times when I'm covering fish, whether I'm on the nymph or the dries, uh, even dries at range, where I've got the head plus any running line outside the water, outside the tip of the rod, should I say. So this line's perfect for that because of the weight distribution. Now, I know Henke's going to flash up when we do a kind of short recap, right, the profile of the line. And then I can talk just a little bit in more detail about exactly why this, this line is so special. But in short, we've still got a nice continuous front taper, right? So that enables me to, with enough weight in it, for me to turn leaders over at close to medium range with good presentation. The cool thing about these lines as well, Chris, is that They've got like um, the where the weight's con concentrated in the back end of this head is that when you want to pop out spay cast, underhand cast, um, and roll cast, because you've got that weight under the rod tip, right, in the D loop, you can still get nice purchase and you can just still deliver these kind of tactical um, spay cast and river fishing cast. So that's really cool. Comes in a kind of, uh, this is my sample line. I've got the other one downstairs on the reel ready to rock and roll. Well, you've got that kind of nice, subtle, green, non-fish spooking head, and then the white running line. You say, a lot of time that doesn't see the light of day, but there are times when it does. Um, so 6% stretch core, Chris, and all these fly lines, as you know, dude, uh, that's really great because um, that, Lack of stretch means that your hook set's are always super keen and super true. Welded loops on both sides, super handy, and small ones, which is great. And um, laser ID marking that almost I can see without my glasses on. So for my fishing down here on the wharf, right, which is 100 metres down from like we're saying from where I'm sat chatting to you, my friend, that is absolutely mustard. And I spent a lot of time back end of last year with that line. Obviously, I haven't spent any of this. Yeah, but that's about to change very rapidly. Um, but it's an absolute winner. I love this line, dude. As um, as like an all-rounder, mate, you've been using one of our new ranges of lines, haven't you? Which one have you been playing with? Um, I've been uh, fishing with the Fario Elite, and uh, I live in Switzerland, and the rivers are open, thank goodness. So I have been using it. And um, this is the line, the Fario Elite, that you'll always find in my uh, bag. It merges the best of two worlds really it's a it's a true all-rounder in the fario line series a line you could uh, comfortably fish anywhere around the world from the missouri in the us to um, a chalk stream in the uk um, it's got a head length of 10.1 meters in uh, weight forwards three and four and 10.6 in weight fours five and seven and it performs excellently with all kinds of spay casts, but at the same time, it's also a fabulous line for overhead casting, it has brilliant balance and uh, superb accuracy in the uh, mid to long range, and um, produces some really lovely loops and comes in a, in a stealthy, sort of a greyish green color, I hope you can see that home, with that pale orange uh, handling running line. The Fario Elite has a relatively long front taper and um, this provides a super good transmission of energy, you know, to put the fly down just really, really delicately. But like you said before, so well, the main weight of this line is concentrated towards the end of the head or where the rod tip is. So it's it's a beautiful spade casting line too. So for me personally, I really love the Fario Elite matched up with a new uh, guideline elevation rod that's just a match made in heaven i just love that combination and that will be my go-to uh my go-to com combination this year definitely um like you said as well to make life easy it's uh it's looped at both ends it's id marked so you know exactly which uh, line you're using and it's built on this um braided multi-filament direct contact core with six percent stretch so 
you know, you have two authority when you set the hook. And uh, yeah, in a nutshell, this is basically the Fario Elite is the true all-rounder. So there was one line I could pick for the rest of my life, this would be the one. Yeah. So you've been you've been using the Fario um, distance. Tell us about that, Jim, and where would you use that? Well, I've used that on the rivers such as the the Eden back end of last year again. So again, going back to what we were saying about the head length, right, dude? So this has got a longer head, so that enables more control over a longer distance when I need to present flies at medium and greater range. All right, eh? this. The tactical, as with the name suggests on the tin, like we were saying before, is for kind of, generally speaking, smaller areas. You could use that on, on the Eden at times where you can get close to the fish. But are those spots, Chris, where you want to cover fish at distance and at range, yeah. then um, the farrier distance is, is, is a killer line. It's also really good, actually, mate, on, um, as a still water line. Because the head's longer. Obviously, you're going to need more room behind it to carry that line in the back cast so from from a um, from a still water perspective it's also a really killer line so back to the, the kind of river uses the one neat thing about this other than the fact the head's longer the front taper is longer too that's really important at range where you're turning over we both like long leaders right you and me mate when we're targeting fish on dries we'll use the longest leader we can kind of consistently turn over and and throw just makes more sense to keep more distance between the fly and that this thick fly line so that line is brilliant because the front taper just enables these long super slow turnovers right accurately the front tapers there in a fly line to dissipate the energy that's stored in that loop right that's speed so it's enough to dissipate the energy to give you the, the gentle presentation but it's still moving quick enough to turn over long leads. It's just looking like it's going to carry and carry and carry and carry and carry and carry this line. It's really cool. The back taper is really important on this one, dude, as well. And it's one of the things about the tactical is because the head's quite short, the back taper's quite small, right? And I see a lot of people with the casting making the mistake of trying to throw too long a line on the river anyway, but even on the still water, trying to get too much line outside the rod tip. What happens is once you go beyond this, this back taper, the rear taper, and then our handling line that we've got on the guideline lines, that everything starts to hinge and everything starts to collapse. The beauty of the distance is that, because you've got this longer back taper as well, you get control, right? You get control in flight. And accuracy with dry fly fishing and river fishing, and just fly fishing, just generally speaking, when you're on a floating line, is absolutely key. And if you don't have this back taper to stabilize the, the flight of the line in the air as you're projecting these loops to its intended target, it's like flying a kite without a tail. The thing just zigzags all over the parish. So, again, because of the weight distribution, a really cool line for spay casting. I actually got my biggest fish off the Eden and last year with this line, mate, it was in a really awkward spot. I couldn't get down below it as I normally like to do because of the trees and a high bank and a really deep drop off. It was rising on the far side of some fast water. So I needed to put out a line across a current with a bit of a mend, um, and I had to single spay it. Now, I don't think I could have made that shot, Chris, with a tactical because the distance and the control that was required. Um, but the distance line was, was just perfect for it. So it's a really cool line, but don't negate this one for the still water as well. I really love it. It's a cool line. The, we have a line, dude, in the, in the setup, in the lineup this year, which is... A bit more specialist, right? But I think it's exactly the right time to bring this line out. And it's a line that you've used on your travels around the world, catching very large trout. <laughs> yeah, I'm very fortunate to go around and have some great friends who introduced me to these places. I was fishing a couple of years ago on, in uh, New Zealand with Jan Ekman, one of our ambassadors, really cool guy, and uh, fishing up a river, howling wind coming down the river. And... Uh, I love my casting, practice all the time, couldn't get my line out, just couldn't, tight loops, speed, angling the cast down, all the tricks in the book, mate, just didn't work, it just blew big spaghetti into my face, and uh, I wish I'd have had this line with me on that occasion, this is the power presentation, uh, this is the two fly rig, one chance master, 
I mean, this is a very unique line. Um, this is the line of choice, my line of choice for those challenging days where you have spooky fish. Um, you need to present a team of flies, maybe with a 15 foot plus long leader with a short length of fly line at the rod tip, but, but still load the rod. I think this is the line I would uh, suggest to anybody out there. The, the, this is a, a masterpiece from our uh, line designer live staff mod. The power presentation has a unique uh, 9.3 meter head. And uh, the this is incredible of the turnover. And that really helps to turn over long and combat headwinds, bulky dry flies, nymph rigs, uh, clink and dink, and all you know, these, these uh, New Zealand style setups. Um, only two meters. One meters, and um, it's divided into two sections, and uh, where the front two meters have a slightly larger diameter, so that gives this line this this punch, this this very unique uh, turnover, and uh, it's a I just love this line, and I've used it for quite quite a while now, and, you know, yeah, it's just great. <laughs> uh, it's, it also comes in this in, in quite stealthy, I hope you can see that at home, a stealthy greeny olive color and has this orange handling and running line so you know exactly where you are when you're stripping the line back in, you want to pick up the line and make a uh, overhead cast and place it back down. So yeah, I think um, images speak louder than words. Henrik, are you there to show the film? Yeah, we, we lost your signal a little bit there, uh, Chris, but uh, yeah, uh, we will uh, now show a short film clip from you uh, fishing in Iceland. So okay. we'll just uh, run it here. Let's go. Yeah, just talk a little bit about what's probably going, what you can see maybe going on there. Um, very, very windy in northern uh, Iceland and uh, wind comes from every direction. And uh, basically the power presentation was the line I really needed in this situation to help me punch the dry flies out and uh, catch those awesome Icelandic ice age trout. Yeah, there's a walk in. Yeah, I, I personally think that choosing the right fly line for the right situation can dramatically improve your success on the water and can open up new water often overlooked by many anglers. You know, the, um, the accuracy and delicacy of fly casting, together with the ability to determine the appropriate fly line, leader and fly for the situation at hand, are the essential skills of the, of the modern fly angler, I think. Yeah, I think that's right. I, listen, I think, you know, it's very easy to kind of complicate this sport, isn't it? That's right. But, but ultimately, like Pete Mackenzie Phelps said to me, there's six inches between your ears. Probably a little bit longer for me because it's such a massive Swede. But, you know, the six inches between your ears, a great approach, balanced kit. And take advantage, Chris, of taking advantage of these different fly line tapers now, which are specifically set up by all the, line, all the rod and line designers and designers from different companies to give, give us the best potential outcome. And like you said, we are absolutely blessed, right, with life. As Lifestyle as our product guru is just, the guy is a flipping 
assassin of a designer. Nothing passes through his fingers that isn't super well thought out, amazingly well delivered and conceived, and is always fit for purpose, right? Guy's just the coolest guy ever. So, Jim, should we do a short recap of all the fly lines? Yeah, let's go, brother. And try to make it really understandable for everybody out there that when they go into a shop, they know exactly which fly line they would use for their particular uh, fishing situation. Yeah, cool. That's man. a good idea, guys. Cool, cool, cool. So I will, uh, I will uh, show the tactical uh, graphic first here. Nice one. So it's up now. Okay, so the tactical, you'll see from that front taper, we've got that long continuous front taper. And what we were talking about, that weight distribution at, towards the back of their head there. So that sits under the rod tip for when you're making those clean and crisp spay casts. So this is a line for small and medium sized rivers. It's quick in the air, change direction, still turns the leader over when you haven't got much line outside the rod tip and great for spay casts. Christopher, you're going to talk about the... Elite. Elite. Are you with us, Chris? Yeah, are you back with us, Chris? Yeah, sorry, I seem to be losing you there. I hope you can hear me. Um, yeah, we can. Carrying on to the Fario Elite. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Fario Elite is this... Uh, all round fly line that you that you could confidently have on your reel anywhere in the world and still really do well. If there was one line I could choose, it would be this one. It's got a 10.1 to 10.6 meter long head. Uh, it's got this beautiful long front taper and uh, with a weight distribution towards the back, as you can see there on this this flawless spay casting properties and. Uh, wonderful head casting balance and the line of choice if you just want like just one one line to do all the jobs basically so the fario elite is the true all-rounder of the bunch on to you jim yeah the distance hanky can you pull the distance graphic yeah, up? it's up here perfect so this is the one with um bigger cast longer cast medium to larger size rivers and still was because of this longer head. So we've got like a 40 foot head. We've got a 21 foot front taper. We've got um, nearly a six and a half foot back taper. And then we've got the, the running line behind. So it's a great line for longer distances, control at distance, um, river, lake, and boat as well from the dries. And if you've got the skill set to carry more line in the air and you want to control line at range, then this bad boy is um, hits all the hits all the markers. Cool. So on to the uh, on to the power presentation. Yeah. This this is quite a unique line. Uh, this is a, a line specially uh, designed to fish a dry dropper that makes a dry flight and a nymph set up like New Zealand style, or if you have really strong headwinds, it's got this special property of having weight concentrated towards the front so this has a really big effect on how the fly the fly line turns over the leader on the flies so you have real authority to uh, uh, present flies in in a headwind and even with uh, uh, two fly rigs so excellent choice if you want to have a powerful presentation of the line of the flies excuse me I think um, What's very, very important to say, and which I think Jim and I are both very proud of, is that um, Guidelines vision today is uh, clean all the way, which means the least environmental impact possible. Um, these, these lines are the most eco-friendly fly lines in the market today. These lines have, are, have a polyurethane coating instead of PVC, PVC bleeds um, harmful, harmful plasticizers into the water where we don't really need it. And on top of that, some clever thinking from the guys, uh, recycled paper boxes uh, coated in uh, UV or water-based UV coating. And uh, what's really important is 
something that's really um, really overlooked is that uh, we've got rid of these plastic spools. We don't need these anymore. Uh, we've worked out a guideline that by taking these spools out and replacing them with these flat with these paper uh, uh, little things in the middle there, that we save 1.2 tons of plastic every year. So can you imagine 1.2 tons of plastic saved just by using your loaf, as you would say in the UK. <laughs> and um, I know what you're going to say, and I know it's a problem sometimes if you don't have, but it's how do I get this thing then onto my, onto my reel? Well, if you've got one of these, you can just uh, open it up and just uh, drop it on there and uh, reuse that. That's probably if you've got one. But if you don't have one of those, um, what I do is um, on dark, cold evenings, I get my wife <laughs> to help me. I like a roll up a magazine and you just insert it into the fly line and then uh, let it expand. And there you go. And you just roll it on. You can do that in front of the fireplace or get the kids out to give you a hand. And there you go. Oh, so, school, that one, Chris. We all used to do that, didn't we? Before plastic spills came along, man, that was just the way. Yeah, we just don't need these things anymore. I think, um, sure. you know, I, agree, I think that's the thing that's very important, isn't it? With, with fly fishing, man, we love the environment. We want to go to places where we have fantastic conditions for fishing. And so this plastic, we just don't need anymore. We have a responsibility to do the right thing. But we've been talking about these beautiful fly lines that have been created to uh, present flies. Every centimetre of these lines has been painstakingly looked at from Life Staff Mod. And then it comes to our job to attach the leader onto our fly line. And, um, you know, power is nothing without control. And I personally think the most overlooked part of our system today is the leader. Strangely enough, anglers pay hardly no attention to the leader. No. Imagine, imagine buying a music system, for example, you know, a hi-fi for you at home for like ten thousand pounds. Have the best speakers, the best um, amplifier, the best gold-coated cables, and all that stuff. But then you have a wobbly contact on where where the plug goes into the wall. You know, it, make, it makes no sense. And this is the plug. This is our direct, visible contact to the fly line. And this this leader has to transmit the energy from the fly line all the way through to the fly. Um, and I personally think that the tapered leader is one of the most important pieces of equipment for the modern fly fisher. And the most forgotten about, Chris, right? It is, yeah. You see it always on our fly casting courses and on these demonstrations. People come along with a setup. They've got a the really beautiful rod, perfect reel, great fly line, and then a skimpy piece of uh, monofilament on the end. It just doesn't work. No. So I think um, I always recommend these, and it's really a great product. The guideline has there. They're uh, tapered leaders. They're called top quality Japanese copolymer mono, and make them. They track super well in the air. And they come in a stealthy grey tint, which is really, really handy. And uh, very importantly, they have quite a long butt section, a long tapered section, and quite a short tip. This design gives you superior turn. I think we both know this. They're, they're, they're specially designed to be lengthened. And, you, know, they, you know, you can't just tie your fly on directly. You do need um, a short... Uh, a uh, piece of monofilament tied onto the end. Uh, like I said, they have a very really powerful turnover. They have no problem with, uh, you have no problem to lengthen the leaders out to a complete length of about 20 feet if you're fishing for dry, with dry fly. Large. Finishing in like three or four X. Then to that, I would add one of these small uh, tippet rings from Guideline in this uh, nickel, stealthy nickel collar. To that, I would add around about 50 centimeters of uh, monofilament tippet. Uh, 
another 1.5 debaters of uh, monofilament to give me the super drag free drift. So my entire leader is around 4.5 to 5.5 meters according to the situation. And that gives me, you know, a super drag free drift. It's important, mate. I think, it, like you said, it, it's one of the most forgotten about yet critical um, aspects. It's that final step, isn't it? That you can do everything in your power to get your kit absolutely balanced and blow it all on what is sometimes, especially for the big fish we've been fortunate to target, the one-shot fish, Chris, aren't they? Yeah. You know, you don't get a second chance at these big fish. You know, and you could have thrown a perfect cast and the whole thing to have collapsed or in and around your in and around your rod tip and um all be right. forgot I think much to do that bit properly. Or don't know. That's right. I think uh much of the secret of fly fishing is closely linked to the ability to cast uh, to cast well. And um you know, uh I always like to use this analogy of golf players. I mean, golf players they have a bag full of irons, you know, they've Cross the packet, every one of them. You need a sand wedge, you need a driver, you need a, a, I don't know, all those clubs. Fly fishermen, they want one rod to do all those jobs, one line, and never practice. Yeah, so, yeah. obviously, this is never really going to work. And, uh, you know, golf players go to the driving range once a week, smash 100 balls, and uh, go potting on Friday night with their friends in the, the clubhouse and with gin and tonic. And, uh, you know, don't be shy to go out there and practice your casting. Uh, put out some markers to practice your accuracy, which is really important. You don't have to be a world champion and cast 50 meters, but you do need to be able to control the line well, especially long leaders is really useful. And also uh, cool casts like the reach cast, which will put your fly line upstream of your fly line, of your fly, so the fly drifts down, fly first. In Bosnia, for example, uh, there's no upstream dry fly there. It's all downstream dry fly and your dry fly coming towards that fish with the fly first and no tip it and no line in sight. So these are invaluable tricks. And uh, consistently landing a golf ball on a green, it doesn't come with luck, you know. You have to practice. My and dad's uh, a great analogy. He is, he's, he is. He talks about, uh, he's a big cricket fan, so he talks about a fast bowler at a test match. And he always used to say about casting, you know, and so does. He's just like, like a fast bowler in a test match. You just keep sticking the ball in the right spot, in the right spot, in the right spot, in the right spot, again and again and again. And again, eventually, the batsman makes a mistake. And it's the same for us, isn't it? If you are you're not going you're gonna to nail every fish. You know, you're going to miss fish. Fish are going to come off. But if you are consistent with your casting, if you, I couldn't agree more. If you have a just a basic understanding of how to form a loop, how to control the loop, you know, and um, how important that is, um, how to rectify your own faults, then, man, you, you know, you can turn yourself into an assassin. I think we both just love uh, fly fishing so much. I think that's why these fly lines are so important, you know, to be able to understand them and to pick the, the appropriate fly line for the specific situation you're fishing just just makes you so much more effective and uh guideline is full of these cool guys with so much experience and a wealth of knowledge and uh definitely something i've learned is that having the right fly line for that particular situation can mean the difference between a good day and a bad day so you know spend some time go on our web on our website it's all there for you guys to check out all the different head length and diameters and way they're designed and you can pick the perfect fly line for your river cool, man. I think it's really important to say I've had a great, I, I love doing these uh, shows with Jim together and guys if there's anything that you're interested in out there or if you have any questions please send us an email or give us send us a little post and uh, we'll uh, try to answer any questions you have and if you have any specific situations or any questions maybe we can do a new one of these about a new topic in the future yeah absolutely Chris absolutely mate Great to work with you, Jim. And you do. Great to see you. All the best, everybody out there. Take care. Stay safe. And uh, we'll be on the rivers before you know it. Very good. Thanks. Thank you, guys. And uh, we'll a clip again here from uh, Alvaro Santillan. Uh, and uh, have a good time. And uh, 
post some comments uh, in the comments feed, please. Bye-bye.